Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is Lucas here. Thanks so much for checking out my YouTube channel. Welcome, I hope you're doing very well. And today we're gonna to be doing a really quick Ableton tutorial about uh, beefing up any drum loops that you've uh, imported into your project from Splice or whatever sample packs that you have. I'm gonna show you how to beef them up using other samples, kind of like drum triggers, and I'm gonna show you how to dial in RC20 retro color to get a really cool vibey effect that will fit into a mix for a neo soul hip hop track that I have pulled up here, but this will work for any genre that you're working in. And um, if you find this helpful, uh, definitely try to subscribe to my channel um, and check out some of the other videos that I have because I'm constantly posting stuff uh, related to music production and Ableton Pro Tools and guitar related stuff as well. So I'm just gonna jump right in here. Here's the track that we're working on. Some things they don't last too long I apologize I'm in my own world And sometimes I get lonely too It's not your fault, it's only mine Words difficult to Cool, so we're really just in this video going to be talking about these drums too. These are my verse drums. So as you can see I've literally dragged in a 100 BPM loop off of Splice. Um, so that's this loop track and then what I actually did was I layered extra kick, rim shot, and open hat which I usually label as OH. Um, so here's the drums by, by themselves. So the first technique is if you're producing a song and you find a loop that you like, so sometimes I'll use loops in production just to kind of speed things up if you're writing a song with an artist right there. Sometimes it may take a little while to program a really cool drum beat from scratch or maybe you're just not really sure what to do so you can just browse some loops and kind of get a different, get some ideas of different genres, different types of beats that would work. And then what I typically do from there is I'll find some other samples that sound good over the loop and I'll use them as triggers. This is a really common technique for rock and metal production. So if you can see here, um, basically I just loaded in a simpler track for just like three instances of them and essentially just copied where I saw the kicks hitting and same thing for rim and open hats so it added like an extra layer on top of the loop and that's a really important technique for my workflow because I find that I can get really beefy drum sounds through layering without having to over process stuff I don't like the sound of super over processed uh, drum samples and things like that and drum loops um, so I like to keep it really minimal as you can see here these don't even have any type of compression or anything on them um, I actually did, go, this is an old project that I haven't opened up in a while, and I actually did kind of a poor job of layering the exact timing, so some of these loops may not be perfectly on the grid because they have like some feel, so now hearing it solo I kind of noticed that some of these hits are off, so one thing that you may want to do is you may want to uh, right click here and do extract grooves, and that will give you a groove template that you can kind of more quickly quantize your MIDI to fit the groove, but you can also just drag it um, manually, which I find to be totally fine as well. So I layered this kick on, these are just splice samples, and here's the rim. And so with the loop in, it's like this. So sounds pretty cool, I think it's better in the context of the whole mix. But the, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is my RC20 retro color pro processing that I put on the group for all of these. So I essentially wanted to kind of congeal the whole sound of the loop and of the trigger samples. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I like to dial in retro color for a drum bus. I find this to be extremely powerful because I love the sound of saturation and distortion on my drums. I just think it adds character. Um, and this also has a really powerful filter right here. So this is what it would sound like off. And here's with it on. Yeah, so there you have it. So this is one of the most popular plugins, um, and uh, for good reason. So I've actually turned the noise down. I find that um, sometimes I'll use, in sessions, I'll have multiple instances of RC20, and the noise starts to really build up. So I just kind of start with them all off, if, if you're planning on having multiple instances of this. Um, if it's just one, you can't add noise, but it can get pretty noisy. So I have this off. 
Uh, the wobble is a great effect for drums. It can get a little weird on harmonic instruments, like uh, instruments with chords, pianos, and guitars, and things like that. You can do a little bit of it, but on drums it's great because it's not playing notes or chords, so the wobble really adds a lot. Um, so I'll just audition this real quick and mess around with it. The wobble's just like a, uh, a record player. Distortion is a must-have. I can crank it, I feel like, and, and I, I keep it in tube mode, but there's all these different modes that you can mess around with, and um, uh, let's see, I think it was in just a yeah, tube pair, um, and then digital, which I love too, but I find that when I add digital, I need to engage this filter, so without the filter, which could be a cool effect, but I find that it's really quite magical if I start to roll this off. And then I haven't used the space. Oh, this is a cool effect, but I just wanted these drums to be as dry as possible, and I did not engage the magnetic. Oh, sometimes I'll use this. It just causes like weird um, like uh, cassette tape dropout sounds and things like that, but for now it's off. So that's exactly how I have this dialed in, and right after the RC20 I do have a glue compressor with the attack really slow, release really fast, and let's see how hard it's hitting. Oh yeah, it's, it's hitting it pretty hard. You can have the dry wet down a bit, and uh, yeah, that's how we get this sound. I'll t I'll play the mix. Some things they don't last too long. I apologize, I'm in my own. Cool. So that's my little quick tip on using splice samples and integrating other uh, layered samples on top of them, and using RC20 Retro Color to kind of congeal the whole thing. So let me know if you found this helpful. Again, I'm Lucas. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here, and I'll catch you guys in the next video later.